Hello, welcome to the very first episode of 2021 Bronco Overland. And behind me, you can see the red Wild Track Bronco with the Sasquatch package at uh, Sarah Ford in Rochester Hills that is not for sale. Uh, it is a demo unit, and uh, I'm going to see if I can drive it next week, and uh, that should be really exciting. So, um, we have already gone through the reservation process and uh, ordered our Ford Bronco and what we did is uh, thanks to Ferris Khan he had a price hack video on the base Bronco is uh, we started with the uh, base Bronco right and added the steel modular bumper right instead of the pla plastic front bumper and we also added the Sasquatch package that is the great equalizer across all the Bronco packages you can get right and uh, once you have a Sasquatch, it doesn't matter what you get past that. They're all Sasquatch Broncos. So uh, something cool is that I'll get a Fender badge too for um, having the Sasquatch package on my base Bronco. Additionally, you get the uh, heavier duty suspension components, obviously, the better off-terrain tires, and uh, the steel bash plates underneath the truck. More of the truck is protected, right? So it's always important when you buy any new vehicles to think about resale value. Uh, if you do sell it, you know, how are you going to do? And on that point, getting the Sasquatch, we felt like 2021 Bronco Overland is a good move. Uh, on top of that, uh, starting with the two-door version, not the four-door. The two-door version is the classic Bronco styling, and uh, their volume will be lower than the four-doors. Nothing against the four-door, but the two-door just looks better. Rear seat legroom is the same. You give up a little bit of rear storage capacity. Uh, also to the roof rails, right? Um, the roof rails uh, on the hard top that you cannot get on the soft top like the wild track back there has, uh, you know, lets you put a tent or a, which we're going to do, an awning, canoes, uh, additional gear, whatever you want to do. Uh, other channels have spoken about the auxiliary switches. Um, we did that as well. Uh, that's a really good thing to have because the wiring comes out in the hood area and just think about all the time and money you'd spend to do it yourself or pay someone to do it way more than $195 right also too, the engine block heater for $100 can't say no uh, that's a nice little thing to have on there if you ever do sell it or need it in cold weather and of course the keyless pad entry uh, I've been hiking with people uh, camping whatever they lose their keys uh, with the keyless pad entry, you can lock everything in the vehicle, including your uh, key transmitter for the Bronco, maybe your wife's or girlfriend's purse, who, anything else you need to lock up while you take off for a while. Uh, that's invaluable for $110, so I'm kind of shocked people aren't selecting that, especially with the hard top, which is better than the soft top for a couple of really big key reasons. Again, the base Bronco comes standard with the hard top is that one, uh, your valuables inside your vehicle, you can't cut through them with a knife like you could on the soft top. Two, when that soft top is pulled all the way back, uh, it blocks your rear view mirror visibility. Three, you can't get roof, rack, uh, roof rails on the top, right? So you're giving up that immediately. And then four, you can't open the soft top from the back like you can a hard top. Uh, there's just way more flexibility with the hard top. And uh, the best consumer truck companies there are, are Ford and Toyota. I know Ford will get the roofs right. Uh, I believe in them. The F-150 and Tundra are as good as you can get when it comes to buying a new full-size truck, obviously. And for quality, right? Uh, even stainless steel that doesn't rust. The Bronco is all stainless steel except the floor pan, I believe. And um, uh, there may be one other area that's stainless steel on the truck. The Bronco's not going to rust on you. These Jeeps from FCA will rust and they all have quality issues. They eventually start to fall apart after three years. Uh, I'm not a believer in FCA powertrains outside of their V8, so um, that's my perspective. Back to the Ford though, we also got the 2.3 liter EcoBoost, right? Uh, that's an inline four, right? The cylinders are in a straight row. That 2.7 liter V6, in spite of all the nice things I can say about Ford pickup trucks, uh, has not had a good ownership experience out there. I don't want it. The cylinders are in a V format and a very small package, right? So you get a lot of vibrational and harmonic issues 
on the 2.7 liter V6 uh, that uh, in the past, if you look up on YouTube and the internet, you'll hear about the cam phaser failures. Uh, Ford, Chrysler have been plagued by, and even GM I believe, have been plagued by cheap cam phasers. I can't believe they're putting in the cheap plastic component cam phaser that fails, makes your timing belt slip and blows up your engine. That's inexcusable when vehicles cost as much as they do. It would be inexcusable on the Bronco if they didn't address the cam phaser for the 2.7. I don't know, I hope they did, but I doubt it, right? Because you know, all these people that are paying sticker and a buffer Broncos when their 2.7s go south, you know, at 40, 50,000 miles or sooner. Uh, on top of that, there's a plastic oil pan, I understand it leaks. So I, I just haven't heard very good many things about the 2.7 liter EcoBoost motor in terms of it being a good motor for the long haul. The 2.3 on the other hand, thanks to the um, uh, Ranger and Mustang, right? There's a lot of performance bolt-on. So the 2.3 liter inline motor, uh, 300 horsepower on premium. And I think the uh, 2.7 is 330 horsepower. Who cares? Uh, the 2.3 has got 300 pounds of torque. And I think the 2.7, has got uh or maybe 330 and the 2.7's got 400. listen with these performance bolt downs for the ranger and mustang you can up that to 330 real quick on the inline four because those four cylinders are in a row uh the um 2.3 can handle far more performance upgrades than that little tiny gerbil mill v6 motor will and i i sound like i'm being harsh but i i, I grew up in detroit i've been around cars my whole life and i am a car guy now i'm not a certified mechanic nor am i a fake expert but uh, like for four cylinders example, I have supported product development teams at major automotive manu manufacturers and I have worked for them before. So I'm talking from a point of experience, but I am offering you my perspective based on what I've lived through in my life. Um, uh, I don't believe that 2.7 liter V6 can handle a significant amount of power upgrade. So if you go back to the 2.3 liter, your front end's gonna be lighter. I believe it's a longer term uh, engine for durability reasons than that, that 2.7 liter will ever be. Uh, on top of that, uh, on both engines, okay, I don't care which one you get, I say get the 2.3, make sure you get an oil catch can on your motor because oil, dirty oil blowback is going to go into your PCV valve. They've already got an oil catch can kit for the Ranger. It's mandatory. Until you get an oil catch can for your Ranger 2.3 or 2 points, I'm sorry, Bronco, for your 2.3 or 2.7 motors, make sure you do an oil catch can underlining that. But until you do frequent oil changes, I would do it every 1,500 uh, miles until an oil catch can is installed because that dirty oil blowback through your PCV valve uh, really destroys motors, believe it or not. So don't think you can just hop in your uh, 2.3 liter or 2.7 liter Ford Bronco and drive it 10,000 miles and there's no gook and smoot through that PCV valve at that point frequent oil changes are required on not just Ford motors, all these motors that are designed this way with turbos. Um, get an oil catch can, we're gonna do it. So there's one for the Ranger already, for the 2.3 liter EcoBoost Ranger. I'm sure they're gonna modify it for the Bronco. It's gonna go on our Bronco because I want my truck to last a long time. So the truck came out to, um, for us, $39,780 list price, got it for. Uh, I got an order number. Uh, I thought about walking you guys through the build a Bronco, but you've, you've probably seen that a million times everywhere else. What I want to say is um, also get the 10 speed automatic. I, a lot of people know that was co-developed um, with General Motors, but for some funny reason, the Ford 10 speed has gotten better reviews than the GM 10 speed, I wonder. Uh, and it's turned out to be a really good transmission. So I'm not worried about the 10 speed automatic, but going back to that manual, uh, manuals in the Ford Mustangs, everyone that bought a Ford Mustang with a manual got screwed and still may be getting screwed. They're made in China and they're junk and no one could really tell me where the manual for the Broncos made. So I'm just assuming they're making it either in Mexico or China. And I don't want that. So I know the 10 speed uh, added some money to the price of the truck. I would have gotten a manual if someone had been able to confirm to me where it was built, like in this country or something. Uh, I'm not saying the Bronco manuals are gonna be bad, but based upon what I know about what happened to Mustang owners, uh, in specific, over 10 model years, uh, anyone who bought a manual transmission Mustang, right? I don't care if it says Borg Warner, it's made in China. Uh, you know, um, nothing's as highly sensitive or fickle as a transmission from an engineering standpoint. And uh, again, on the transmission, 
uh, I, you have to get the 10-speed automatic right now until there's some reliability data on the, on the uh, manual transmission, right? And I think for resale value on a two-door, uh, if the manual had been made in here, in this country or Canada, if someone had been able to confirm that for me, that would have been the way I went and it would have dropped the price of the truck, 1500 bucks or something, I don't know. But you know, in the big picture, I know that 10-speed automatic is going to be uh, durable and reliable. So let me talk about automatic transmissions again. I don't want to pick on the Bronco. Uh, don't think you have to, you know, do not hesitate to get your automatic transmission fluid changed in your Bronco or whatever you buy. Um, uh, when it says the key point, if it says change that automatic transmission fluid at 10,000 miles or 30,000 miles, I'm not for sure in the Bronco, do it sooner or by that point in time every time. Uh, degrading transmission fluid, uh, these transmissions are so sensitive, you're gonna have problems. So, and the other point I wanna make is, uh, typically, you know, uh, I'm, I'm budget-minded, cost-conscious like everyone else. When it comes to a transmission fluid change, always go to the dealer for your vehicle. Uh, they do it correctly. I can point out uh, something I'm very familiar with also because I restore Acuras. Uh, the uh, automatic transmission that was found in early 2000, um, Acuras and Honda Civics, etc. Accords, uh, they went bad quick because people were not changing the automatic transmission fluid. And I think Honda took more flack than that because it's a great transmission. I have a one owner uh, five-speed automatic sport shift transmission in my Acura. Never an issue because that owner followed the maintenance. The other thing is that with these transmissions, you want them gravity drained. Uh, when you hook up a, a, one of the, a new transmission to a high pressure transmission fluid exchange kit, it damages your internals. So I don't care if going to the dealer for an automatic transmission fluid is gonna cost me a few extra bucks because I'll have peace of mind. So make sure on top of frequent oil changes until you get an oil catch can, uh, you do free, uh, you, you stay on top of your automatic transmission transmission fluid changes. It's absolutely critical for any new vehicle, including the Bronco. Uh, so again, you know, that 2.3 liter engine though, will definitely take the performance mods. It's been proven out there uh, in the Mustang performance and Ranger performance lands. And with those cylinders in a straight line, there's going to be less vibrational st stress. The harmonic balance of that motor is way better than that little tiny 2.7 liter motor. So um, I know Ford's working on a Warthog with a 400 horsepower V6. Same thing there. That's obvious, obviously a better motor than the um, 2.7 liter for a lot of reasons. It's bigger, just for one. The more displacement, the better your, the motor's ability to handle those harmonic balances, etc. But same thing applies to that motor. Ford should have went for the Coyote V8 and just put their foot down with FCA. That's my perspective, not the final word. But uh, all these EcoBoost motors on the market, their first four or five years on the market, have all had oil leaking, cam phaser issues. And I'm still hearing about people, whether it's GM with their 3.2, 3.4, 3.6 liter V6s, FCA with their V6s, um, and, uh, you know, Ford with its small displacement motors, they're all having garbage cam phaser issues. Your cam phaser goes, uh, it lets your timing belt slip a degree or two, and it destroys the motor, right? And uh, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna just really, 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 um, uh, go for the 2.3 liter in this case. Uh, I often think about, you know, the Ford Pinto. What a piece of junk that was. In the case of the Bronco, Ford did not throw the Bronco over the wall. Even the base model's really nice, which is why I'm recommending it as a price hack. And I got the idea from Ferris Khan's channel uh, to get a base model built from there. You're just gonna save a ton of money. So also too on the base model, you're gonna get that eight inch screen. Uh, you know what, that works really well. I, I know 12 inches would be nicer, but maybe there's an aftermarket opportunity after you buy the Bronco to change it, but I've looked at the base model interior in person. Uh, I shot over to Woodward this weekend for the Woodward Cruise, and uh, it's a nice interior. Critical on the base model, though, is you're gonna want seat covers because I know that fabric's gonna wear. I just know it. Um, uh, I think the fabric on the base model could be tougher, maybe? than it is, it's, it's their standard stuff they use everywhere else, I believe, I believe I'm correct. So we will get seat covers. Another important thing, when you're ordering, reserving your Bronco online, you have the um, opportunity to add accessories like a tent, an awning, 
uh, door sill guard protectors, you want that too. Um, film to protect the paint. Uh, I didn't do that, but the rear of the cargo, when that tailgate opens, it's all bare metal, finished like the truck. And I've already seen online these demo Broncos that these other channels are, are using. They've dented, the, they've dented the rear door on the inside and they scratched up the interior. Plastic scratch is so easy, so my advice there is for the rear cargo area, two door or four door, canvasback.com. I've used them on my Toyota 4Runner TRD Pros. They have an excellent product. They custom sew a liner for the back of your truck. Our Bronco is going to get it. It's going to get the seat protector. So I want to go back to these accessories. Do not add them to your build because they're all ordered through the parts department at your Ford dealer. So I now have the ability to still order all that stuff or search for it online at a lower price. Like Yakima's everywhere, for example. Uh, the seat liners that they're selling through Ford are, 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 are full price. Don't add that stuff to your deal, okay? Yakima just cares about selling their inventory and stock, for example, and I already know there's other tents that can go on top of the Bronco that may be less than the Yakima or that I might like better. So keep that stuff separate, right, and negotiate through the parts department, right? So I'm very, very um, proactive in encouraging everyone to do the base model with the Sasquatch package. You will get a fender badge too, which doesn't come on the base model. Uh, you know, it's a great equalizer across the board as that beautiful wild track sits behind me. Uh, definitely, I believe you're going to need seat covers front and rear. Uh, we've got a great dog that we love, and uh, but protect those base seats. But everything is plug and play on the Bronco, right? So you can, um, uh, you know, literally if you found a wreck Bronco two years from now, like this one, you could take the seats out of that and put them in your base. Who cares, you know? And then that front bumper, you don't want that plastic front bumper and plastic tray underneath your Bronco. You gotta get the Sasquatch package and you gotta get that modular bumper for $825. And you gotta get, you know, if you skip that engine block heater, I think it's a no brainer for a hundred bucks, but you gotta get that keyless entry on any Bronco you order, right? Also too on the base Bronco, they don't offer the tow hitch receiver and seven pin harness. I don't care, it's $595. They're not offering it on the base when you build your Bronco because they're having issues with the supplier. And I wanted to go back to that. So no one likes the hardtop roof issues Ford is having. Ford did not throw this truck over the wall. When you look at what it offers, you know, this is just a, they're a victim of COVID, supplier issues, people not wanting to go back to work because of the extra benefits on unemployment, whatever it is, right? Uh, it's, it's been a tough time with COVID for businesses to learn new operating models to maintain their existing quality levels. But Ford will get that hard top right. So another uh, thing I've learned is uh, I talked to the sales manager here, Don at Sarah Ford, and I'm going to see him next week for a new video, fingers crossed, and maybe drive this thing back here. Uh, Ford's extending production of the 2021 Bronco through December. So you can still order a Bronco online and get it secured. It's great like with the uh, 64 Mustang or 65 Mustang to get a first model year. And I mean, phenomenal, right? Just phenomenal. The other thing is that the base model doesn't come with that grab handle on the center console, but I'm curious if by getting the Sasquatch package, they include it. There you go. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna ask Don that question, right? And uh, I'm also gonna talk to Don about the 2.3 liter engine being superior. Less weight in the uh, front of the truck, which I think improves handling. I think um, I've seen online the uh, highway testing, road testing of the of the uh, 2.7, and I've seen it for the 2.3. I don't see a big difference. You know, this is not a drag racer back here, right? Uh, the 2.3 I think is more than enough. I, I I really do, and definitely superior to that 2.7. Uh, Facts will bear me out on that. And uh, the oil catch can, you, you get in a Bronco or anything new, get an oil catch can for your car sooner than later until you do very frequent oil changes and even upgrading to synthetic if you don't have that already or a synthetic blend. I think those are great ideas for the long-term viability of your new car or truck or Bronco because these things have gotten so expensive, their pricing has outstripped the normal incomes of most people and it's very upsetting. And it's upsetting to me that the, they think, you know, people will pay hand over fist for these vehicles, but they won't address things like cam phasers, uh, plastic oil pans leaking. So I have a concern around plastic oil pans is that, you know, you bash it. It won't happen on the Sasquatch, but it might happen uh, on your base Bronco without the Sasquatch package or any Bronco without the Sasquatch package. 
you know, uh, how much of a hit can a plastic oil pan take uh, that an aluminum versus an aluminum oil pan or metal oil pan, right? So I think a plastic oil pan would get bashed and maybe not penetrate, but it would break its screws. I, I'm telling you, I have a funny feeling about that, okay? So, um, guys, this is our very first episode. I'm sharing some wisdom, perspective. It's not the final word, but I, I think I've said some good advice, some good things. Uh, Two-door, Sasquatch, hard top, modular steel bumper, keyless entry, resale value, canvas back for the rear of the truck. Uh, you want to protect the inside of that nice looking tailgate and you want to protect those plastic panels that are going to scratch so easy. Uh, the door sill protectors as well. Uh, if you don't put those in, your door sills are going to get destroyed or put that protective film on there until that happens. I'm instructing my dealer to not take off the door sill protection when they prep my vehicle for delivery. I want it left there until I can apply that inner door sill protector, the metal one. I think there's three different ones they offer uh, when you spec out your Bronco. So um, those are our thoughts on episode one. Uh, taking you guys from our reservation, ordering uh, to delivery, and then beyond that, when we use the truck functionally, whether it's canoeing, overlanding, uh, throwing bikes on the back of it, uh, maintenance, right? Um, dropping in that old catch can. Another thing you can do immediately before I say goodbye episode one, they have K&N air filters that are replacement for the OEM air filters. Drop one in, you're gonna get five horsepower right there, five to seven horsepower, and maybe one to 1.6 miles improvement in fuel economy, right? The K&N air filters, patented technology. And another thing I'll do every oil change with this truck is use Z-Max micro particle lubricant um, in the, um, uh, engine block, fuel, and also transmission. It was the only product that Carroll Shelby ever endorsed and he wouldn't take any money for doing it. He used it in Shelby's. It's micro particle lubricant, I believe. Consumer Reports did a report on it. Stuff works and uh, it strengthens and cleans the inside of that engine. And that'll offset any damage to the PCV valve on, on your Bronco motor. So guys, uh, thank you for episode one. Looking forward to future episodes. Let me know what you think about what I said. Um, about anything, uh, oil changes, oil catch can, my resale value comments, and uh, I'm excited to be getting a two-door base with roof rails and a metal front bumper and a Sasquatch package with a six-speaker audio system, and uh, you know, I'm gonna be really excited to throw a rooftop 10 on it. That's gonna make my day. All right, guys, uh, see you next episode. Thank you.